guys, we got a special little treat for you lined up today. Thank you, all you wrestling fans, for coming out here to the big event. This is my first show here. We'd like to welcome you all. Get comfortable, take your butt tenders, and we're going to get things rolling and moving. we got the man himself from the Red Light District himself, the Godfather. been pushing cannabis way earlier than any other wrestler has that I can think of. Um, cannabis, the funny thing about me is I smoked cannabis for the first time as 27 years old. I was Papa Shango, I was going through a divorce, and uh, Undertaker was filming a movie called Suburban Commando, and I went to LA, long story short, uh, I tried cannabis for the first time, and when I tried it, it made my ankles feel better. It made my back feel better. Uh, I went to the gym. I had the best workout I ever had in my life. And at the time I tried cannabis, I'm taking Vicodin, Vicoprofen, Percocets, Percodan, uh, Halcyons. I'm taking drugs like everything from A to Z and drinking a bottle of Jack Daniels. Ooh. And uh, now, even I just had uh, complete hip surgery replacement and I don't take any pain pills at all. I refuse to take them. It's just destroyed so many people's lives. But it was the best thing in the world for me. And I've been telling ever since that time, ever since I've had the chance to tell people about it, I've been telling them, you know, it's not for everybody. I don't try to get people to smoke weed. What I do is tell people what it does for me and what it has done for me. Yeah, that's all you can do. And it's crazy that it's taken, you know, this long, you know, for New York State to get on board or, or, or just the United States in general. And, you know, like right here, you're on sovereign land. You're on the sovereign Seneca Nation. So all this is legal. All this is what we're doing. We're safe here, guys. You can smoke. You can relax. You know, it's, it's crazy that it's taken this long to do. Um, when you first started, how did you exactly get in? to wrestling because you were you were working in strip clubs you were a bouncer you were a co-owner you know i know that you're you're quite a big biker guy for a while too so yes. how did you fall into i like wrestling maybe i can get into wrestling were you a wrestling fan growing up believe it or not i was not a wrestling fan i was a roller derby fan oh neat and the uh, bay area northern california roller derby in the 70s was way bigger than wrestling and we they'd be at the cow palace and roller derby would fill the whole place up and wrestling would have half a house. And so I grew up that. How I got into wrestling, they were filming a, a movie with Sylvester Stallone called <laughs> Over the Top. It was an arm wrestling movie. And uh, so the guy, Scott Norton, was in that movie and along with other wrestlers that were extras. And I was uh, working at a strip club that was right down the street from MGM. I was a manager, bartender, doorman. Back then you were everything. And so these guys would come to the bar and they're like, hey, you should become a wrestler. And I'm like, ah, I don't know about all that. And uh, they said, well, you uh, ever hear of Bam Bam Bigelow? And I'm like, yeah, the dude with all the tattoos on his head. Yeah, I know who he is. And they're like, well, he made a million dollars last year. And I went, wrestling? Made a million dollars? And so uh, I made some calls. And literally three years from that call, I'm in the WWE f at the time three years from that call probably that's how quick it happened for me because there was no black guys like me that were tattooed they, i was just so different they were just dying to get me on tv and the reason that i was hired as papa shango is because when vince hired me he says you have a body of a monster he says but you have a baby face he goes we got to do something with that face so i went home um Set for like three months, just three months, kept training, and then he called me and he basically said, Charles, I want you to go rent the movie Live and Let Die. I always try to talk like Vince. And uh, I always like when wrestlers do like yeah, a Vince McMahon oh, impression. Because yeah. they all do a good impression, but it's in their like own way, I've noticed. <laughs> and so he says, Charles, I want you to go rent the movie Live and Let Die. There's a voodoo character, and I already knew the movie. It was a James Bond film. I knew everything about it. But that's where Papa Shango came from. Did you, when they, when they gave you that, that gimmick, that character, 
new to the wrestling business, were you kind of like, oh, I don't know about this, or you knew that, no, I can make this work, I can, I can adapt to this, and this is who I'm gonna be, and that was it. Brother, I was so happy, excited, to be in the WWF yeah, at the time, I would have did anything they asked me to do just to get there that quick and be part of the, sh we call it the show. New York was always, back in the day, we called WWE New York and yeah. we called WCW Atlanta. So, so that's because that's where they were yeah. filmed. Yeah. So it was to make it to New York was, it was a big thing. Now, like when you, you got the character, you know, I know that you watch Live and Let Die, you really got into it. When you were working with guys like Ultimate Warrior and stuff and you're putting the curses on them, making them throw up and all that stuff, you were really getting into it, man. You watch that character, you're really selling that. Like, that looks, that um, looks good. After a while, I mean, I got into it and it got to the point where I got so much into it is when they painted up my face, I wouldn't talk to nobody anymore. <laughs> and I would go sit in the corner and I would just sit in the corner they paint me like if my match was at nine o'clock at night, they'd paint me up around eight o'clock. So from eight to nine, I would just sit there and I wouldn't talk no matter who it was. They knew it. I would just sit there. And then so I, that's what I did to get into that. Well, you character. hear a lot of people they, they, to get into that character. I've heard rumors, you know, that like Kane was like that when he put that mask on. Yeah. He was Kane. You know, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, you're selling this. You're selling, you know, who you are. You need to believe in it or no one else is going to believe in it. So, I mean, you really did good with that. Kama Mustafa, how did you like that character transitioning from Papa Shango? Two different worlds, two different characters. Did you like it? Did you hate it? I mean, you made it work for a little while. You talk about Kama Mustafa in the nation. Yes, sir. Let me go back a little bit. The thing about wrestling for me, I always had strip clubs. I always, and then I became one of the owners of a club called Cheetahs in Las Vegas, which we sold four years ago. But I always... The money was cool in wrestling, the money was real cool, but I made money outside of wrestling. So wrestling for me was fun. And when I wasn't having fun, it was fun to be around. At that time, everybody was big and they were all athletes and big, crazy, stupid shits like me. And it was fun being around people like that. So when I wasn't having fun, I would go to Vince and say, Vince, I ain't having fun, man. And Vince would say, Charles, go home for a little while and we'll repackage you. And they'd call me and say, you ready to come back? And I'd be like, no, I'm, having, I'm, I'm fine. I don't need to be going through tables, getting hit over the head with cheers. I'm here looking at naked women every day, man. Are you joking <laughs> me? And so I would come back and I would come back. So they talked me into coming back. Most people don't know this. If you look at this picture right here, the top picture, there's a Papa Shango. That's me there. And they, they were bringing me back as Papa Shango. So I get the TV, they give me the new outfit, and in this picture, there's, there's a picture of him. That's the only picture they have of him. So they, Way more menacing looking, yeah. way more meaner looking. So this time, it's not going to be so hokey pokey, people aren't going to be doing weird, this is going to be more rustling and more serious. And so Jerry Lawler, most people don't know this, Jerry Lawler is an artist. And so he painted that face on me, and we took those pictures, and then they said, uh, hey, Vince wants to see you. And so I said, okay. They said, nope, take your face off. Vince wants to see you. So they take my face off. I go in there to see Vince. And I swear it went just like this. Charles, change your plans. <laughs> and I'm like, change your plans? I'm Papa Shango. I'm in shape. I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. Change your plans. I'm like, well, change your plans? He goes, we're going to call you. We're going to put you in the nation of domination. We're going to call you Kama Mustafa. You and Farouk are going to wrestle Undertaker in a handicap match tonight. You're going to go over, meaning I'm going to win. Vince called me and Ron into the office, and he's like, do you know who Dwayne Johnson is? And I had no idea who that was. And Ron did. He's like, yeah, they rock rocking my via, whatever his name was. So uh, I think that's what he came out with first. So Vince said, we, Vince basically said, well, I tried to make him Samoan. And it didn't work. He goes, this time I'm going to put him in with a bunch of black guys and see what happens. And he's basically, and he says, the thing about it is once, and I swear Vince said this, Vince says, once I get people to hate this kid, when I turn him, he'll be the biggest thing wrestling ever saw. Now, I don't know if he says that about everybody, but he said it about Dwayne. But he kind of laid out what he was going and everything. And, and then we called Rock in. And because, you know, you got you to mess with the diva attitude sometimes. 
And so we, we called him in and they were like, you down with this? And he was down, but he didn't want to, we all wore hats. Remember the little nation of domination yeah. hats and the Muslim hats, we all wore that. Rocky wouldn't wear a hat. <laughs> so here we go, we go, here we go. And then he didn't want to wear the colors that we were wearing. So me and Ron basically said, listen, if you don't want to do it, we're the ones helping you, you ain't helping us. So if you don't want to do it, we don't want to do it. And so he agreed to put on his trunks, I don't know if there's any pictures of the rock, but on his trunks, he had the, the red, green, and whatever, the, the signs that we had. But it worked out really well, man. It was really fun doing that. No, I mean, that launched a lot of careers because then you had uh, Mark Henry and D'Lo start tagging, start doing skits, start doing gimmicks. You had that rock took off with a bolt of lightning. And then they kind of left you hanging, but that created the Godfather character, the character that, you know, in my opinion, is such an iconic attitude era wrestler that could not be replicated in 2023 oh, if you no. want to bring this character back now you'd, you'd have to tune it and tweak it and modify it so much that it would not be the godfather it wouldn't work no it wouldn't it would not i mean back in the day this is an original this one is not an original wwf shirt but back in the day this is an original shirt that you could purchase from wwf i mean we got the godfather on here it says you know, light a fatty for Pimp Daddy on the back of it. And they, they actually sold these pretty well. They, I'm the only wrestler, you, I don't care who you name, I'm the only wrestler ever to have marijuana leaves actually on the shirt, not a saying, on the shirt. And I had another one that says, had marijuana leaves around it. It's on the front said, who's your daddy? And on the back it said, Godfather loves skinny women but will never turn down a fatty. Oh my God. Yeah. And that's what it said, yeah. So uh, I'm very proud of that, man. And those are official, that's an official Did they WWE. sell those in children's sizes? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's so cool growing up. Um, now, did they, because you'd come out and you'd say, you know, don't, you know, don't hide it, pull it out and light it, you know, 420. Your one vest, which I, I remember, uh, said 419 got a minute like i love that that one said hempin ain't easy oh that one said hempin ain't easy here's something that a lot of people didn't know is is first of all my wife she is the one that created the godfather all her idea i was back to the where i was having fun or not i was having so much fun in the nation of domination and like you said d'lo and mark henry the rock was kind of doing his thing now d'lo and mark henry were doing their thing and i was i didn't have a thing so we came up, my wife came up with the Godfather. My hair grows like real, real fast. If I don't shave, I, I was gonna grow, I, I could still grow an afro. But for whatever reason, my hair grows fast. So we, <laughs> so we started growing my hair and uh, she got a seamstress that started making the vest and making, she had a jeweler making the gold. We had a hat company that still sends me hats that says Godfather in them. It's kind of cool, oh, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's sick. Um, <laughs> You know, um, that was kind of cool, huh? Yeah, a nice little trick. <laughs> yeah, but she was the one, all I did was the entertaining. All I did was the entertaining, but she, everything, the fur coats, she had a lady making me fur coats, but all her, her idea. And, I uh, cause I was having fun and yeah. I didn't want to leave. And so we developed that character and it was the same time that I, I almost joined the NWO. Oh, wow, really? You guys know that story? No, I don't know that story. I was coming, I just became the Godfather. Uh, my contract was coming up and uh, WCW, that's when uh, Razor and Kevin Nash were over there at NWO. So they yeah. called me, they're like, hey, uh, you wanna join us? I'm like, what you got going on? They said, well, we wanna make you a bodyguard for the NWO and then eventually you'll start wrestling. Oh, that would have been cool. And so I'm like, okay, well, and then they asked me what I wanted I, for three years. I gave them what I wanted. And they said, yeah, I think we can do that. So I'm like, cool, cool, cool. And so all of a sudden I'm waiting for a call back. I'm waiting for a call back. There's no call back. And all of a sudden I turn the TV on and I see Virgil. Oh, there we go. Oh, Virgil is the bodyguard <laughs> for the NWO. And so what happened, I'm not going to get into why, but what happened, they decided to save a lot of money and go with Virgil instead of me. And so, uh, which was cool with me because it, I ended up being the Godfather and get, doing my thing. But about the Godfather, what a lot of people don't know is those vests that I wore, I never wore the same vest twice on TV, never. Once I wore it on TV, then I'd wear it in the house shows. 
<laughs> I would not. I would never wear the same outfit twice. I remember you, had on the, TV. you had the cow one. You had like a oh. yellow one with flames, black one with this flames. This is my wife. Green. It's my yeah. wife just getting stuff. For That's me. cool. You're like a power couple. You know, there's a there's a woman behind a man type of thing. That's neat. And it's such a crazy character. Like, who came up with the hose? Where where did the hose come from? I think we all want to hear about the hose. Where did those come from? Um, I I, I, like, I know a lot of these girls. That's Donna. And the black hair, I, I remember a lot of these girls. Look at all those people. That's funny you remember their names. Um, oh, I mean, that, that was a big part of my gimmick right there, the girls. That was probably the biggest part of it. Um, the hose. WWE had t nothing to do creatively with The Godfather. That's all me. And so I was wrestling Bradshaw. I was Kama Mustafa, he was Bradshaw, and we're wrestling everybody. We're wrestling on popcorn match. And if you guys don't know, popcorn match is the match after intermission. It's usually the match that don't mean nothing. They're just trying to get people back in their seats. So it's called the popcorn match. I was on that popcorn match, and uh, me and uh, Bradshaw are beating the hell out of each other for 10 minutes. And we're getting no reaction whatsoever, Not a, nothing. The people are sitting, we call it sitting on your hands. People are sitting on their hands. So I went to Jack Lanza, God rest his soul, and I'm like, hey, Jack, I want to try something different tonight. Do you mind? Yeah. So out of the blue, I talked to John. Mind you, we're getting no reaction in 10 minutes. So out of the blue, I go to John. I'm like, John, I want to try something. And I told him what I want to do. And so I said, I'm going to offer you some girls. And I'm gonna, I didn't have any girls with me. I'm like, I'm going to offer you some girls. I'm going to say, in the back, in a limo, waiting for you right now, I got five of the finest hoes you've ever seen. You know, and but so I go out there, right? And so I just grab the microphone and now I'm growing my hair. I got a little afro going and I'm dressed a little bit different. And so I get on the mic and I'm like, I'm just going to say it. I'm a pimp. And just how you guys chuckled. All of a sudden you hear the chuckle. I was like, but what you don't know is right here in urban New York, man, they got some of the best <laughs> holes ever born. <laughs> See how you guys are acting? Okay, so now we're getting reaction. We ain't doing nothing. I, then I say, how I know is there's one of my old hoes. And she'd be like, no. Nah, 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 nah. And I'd be like, there's one of my old. Then I'd find maybe an overweight girl or something. I'm like, hey, she's a little bigger now, but that's one of my old hoes too. <laughs> and people would laugh. And I'm like, hey, Pippa, it ain't easy, man. But it's like that. So then I'd, get, I'd offer job John the girls. And then the place would just start going, take the hoes. Take the hose. The whole place is chatting. Take the hose. And I'm like, man, they're telling you what to do. Take the hose, man. Mm -hmm. So he takes the hose. The place goes crazy. Mind you, there's no girls. There's no girls. And so and then, of course, now he takes them, starts, uh, starts walking away. And then I get the mic and start healing on the people. See another dumb redneck that, you know, I start healing on the people. Mm -hmm. So now they start booing me again. John turns around. You know, the referee spins me, tells me when he's there. I turn around, John hits me with that lariat, pins me, one, two, three. I jump up, put my hat back on, and go, man, pimping ain't easy. <laughs> and it got the biggest pop. So we went from killing each other for 10 minutes, not getting reaction, to doing nothing. That shirt right there, there's the shirt. Oh. Is that my band guy? That's it. on, man. That shirt that he has on is so rare that you, you can't even find one of those. I had two of them. He bought one of them. <laughs> and I and then I have the other one. Oh, that's sick. Is that an original? Is that an OG? No, that's a WWE shirt. Oh, wow. It, has, it still has the tag on it. I had two of them. He bought one, and I kept one that I wear. Okay. And there's no more. You can't find that. But you see the marijuana leaves around it? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a sick a, shirt, man. Yeah, that was a WWE shirt. That's insane, man. That's crazy. Now, when you would come down, I don't want to get off topic, but you're coming out and you're saying, you know, roll a fatty for Pimp Daddy. Did, how did you get away with that stuff? How did you, Vince never said anything or no one ever you know said what? like, hey man, calm it down with that weed stuff. Because this is the late 90s, you know what I mean? This is during the Attitude Era and you right. had freedom. I was never scripted. Only time I was scripted was it like it was a, a pay-per-view or something you had to mention something right or a, a date but they never ever like nowadays the guys are scripted like you won't believe like their matches and i'm not i'm not here dogging nobody but their matches are scripted everything's scripted time at this time you do that back then it wasn't 
And so uh, we just came up with stuff. Uh, Vince, or Shane is the one that came up with the whole train. Is it really? No way. I didn't We're in the know ring that. and Shane's like, you got to do something before you do your splash in the corner. He goes, I want you, he goes, you remember Soul Train? I'm like, yeah. He goes, I want you to, I, I sit here watching myself. I never watch myself on TV. So it's throwing me off because I'm like, oh, wow, look at that. That was a, <laughs> that was a shitty bump. <laughs> that was another shitty bump. But uh, see, I got off track now. Oh, no, I, we I, got I, a wrestling match right now if you want to watch one. I'm just like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Look at all. Yeah. This is why, that's why my hips are gone and stuff. But you know what? You said you've never watched yourself. This is one of your bigger matches, your Intercontinental Championship match against Goldust. And before we get started, what was it like working with Dustin Rose? How is Goldust? How is he? Does he smoke? Better. No. Not a smoker. He chews tobacco. Ah, okay. That's Different how old I call it, tobacco. He's a chewer, um, doesn't smoke. His brother smokes, but he doesn't smoke. Um, good guy, I've wrestled him as Gold Dust, Dustin Rhodes. I mean, we were in Memphis together when he was big Dustin Rhodes. Good guy, loved working with him. Had no problems with him. You know, it was, it was a fun, that was a good match we had. Now what about Big Boss Man? He's right here, he's uh, well you know what, we'll just play it for him and we'll touch back on that. If you want to say something, I'll pause it. Jerry, Jerry Lawler, you don't have to pause it. Jerry Lawler was so great on the mic on my matches. Look at all that gold. My wife made, had all that made. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just laughing at it. I'm going to stop talking. I want to watch. Okay. That's right. It was at the Joe Louis Arena. Dustin was really good at playing a weirdo. I'll give him credit. He sold that character very well. The girls used to have a great time, man. Over the top rope, baby. I'm 6'5 in all legs. If I sat down next to you, I guarantee you guys would be taller than me. I'm all legs. As a child, I hated Big Boss Man. Now, I was like, and I was like an adult, I appreciate like what a guy like him did for the business. You need the bad guys. You need to hate some people. God rest his soul. Can you imagine doing this on TV nowadays? No. How much trouble would you be in? You'd be off the air. We got some hockey players here from the Detroit Red Wings. Darren McCarty. I know that all these people know that they'll take the hole. Look at the pop you're getting from the crowd. The crowd's eating it up every time. You know what the funny thing is? I don't remember doing this match at all. Really? I didn't remember, I remember it was in Detroit. I didn't remember Boss Man being a part of it. You have so many matches though, I mean. Oh dude, and then considering, you know, you're wrestling sometimes three times a week, doing dark shows and stuff. 
it all kind of blends together, I'm sure, after a while. Now, am I going to wrestle him now? Yeah, you wrestle him for the title. <laughs> hey, watch out. Hey, you dirty bastard. <laughs> Dustin's a lot bigger than people think he is. Yeah, no, he's a tall guy. He's a good 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I messed that up. I wondered that the few times I've watched this match, if you meant to drop him like that or if it was just... No, I, was, I messed up. It's live TV. See how they fudge the numbers? <laughs> it, oh boy. Hey, that's not nice. Did the vests ever like get in the way or get annoying or not? Nah, they were fine. Whooping my ass. <laughs> he is the Intercontinental you, Champion. You see all the signs? I don't think they allow signs anymore, do they? They do, but not to the volume that it used to be back in the Attitude Era, it seems. Do I, mean, they used I think they really watch what people put on their signs. I remember when I was a kid, a guy had a sign that said, the guy behind me can't see. So, I mean, I think they really limit on what you can bring to the show just because... People were just bringing ridiculous stuff just to have a sign, I think. There used to be so many signs. I think they stopped it because people couldn't see. Yeah. What are they saying? Nitro sucks, I believe. Do you still have those boots or are those long gone? I might have them. No, I don't have those. Those, this was a long, this was, yeah, I went through a different, a patent leather boot after that. Those were old leather wrestling boots. Those were, actually those were Papa Shango boots. Oh, okay, In my cool. high water. <laughs> those were Papa Shango boots that I was trying to hide the red soles. Tactical difficulties. You take a pretty bad spill right here if you watch. See right there? That's why I I landed on my left side. Yeah. That's what messed up all them years. I would land on my left side. Was that your go to to take a big bump like For that? Summary, and then Taker, Midian, guys used to tell me, you gotta stop landing on your left side. But stuff like that is why my left side's messed up now. Because, I mean, that's not, that's a pretty far drop. And you're a big guy, man. And you said you were, what, like 6'5", then? Yeah, I'm probably 3, I'm probably 3'10", there. I step off my sidewalk the wrong way, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got bongs, too. We got 16 different strains in this place. We got a dab bar. We got some edibles. I will say this. All the cannabis that I've tried here has been top-notch. All top-notch. Yeah, from seed to, to product, it's, it's homegrown, it's local, it's clean, it's all organic stuff. And uh, there you go. You're the Intercontinental Champion right there. <clears throat> now, you were supposed to drop this, I believe, to Owen Hart. And then that never panned out. And then afterwards, you dropped it to Jeff Jarrett, I believe, if that's correct. Do you remember that far back? Yeah, I remember. Um, the thing was is... When they put the belt on me, it, it kind of lost, it kind of got lost in with the girls. Yeah. And it became that the belt was just something the girls carry. Cause I kind of, I kind of had my own show. And the guy, it, it, and it wasn't about wrestling. It was about entertaining the people with the girls. So the belt kind of got lost in it. And then they decided to drop it on Owen. And then that's when Owen, you know, that when Owen lost his life was that <clears> night against me. A lot of people don't know that. And they were going to put the belt on Owen. So then I went to Memphis and dropped it to Jeff Jarrett. And I see what you're saying because I remember there was, 
I mean, this is celebratory with the hose right here, but I remember there was times you would you'd lose, you'd get beat up, and you'd still have the hose falling on you and laying on you, so it wasn't like you never actually lost, you know what I mean? You never actually, you know, that never really affected the Godfather <laughs> it, it in any way. It, that had nothing to do with it. People just wanted to see the show. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that really worked. So when you would go from city to city, I mean, you're getting sometimes seven, eight girls. Where are these all these girls exactly coming from? Uh, strip clubs. Would you go hunt them down or would someone from the, the only time WWF we, to go grab them? The only time that I ever went and got them is when Vince had heard that we were doing good in the house shows. Me and Bradshaw did it maybe two or three times with no girls in the, in the uh, house shows. And then when we went to TV, Vince is like, you think you can go get me some girls? So me, Taker, and the Harris twins who were part of the biker DOA, uh, we went to the strip club that we'd probably been to the night before. And we got some girls, brought them back, put them on TV. And after the first time we did it, it was over, man. Like, and then they took it over. Bruce Pritchard, at first it was Bruce Pritchard's job, and then he would just call strip clubs. And then as it got more and more over, uh, the strip clubs would call the WWE and say, hey, oh, when you're man. in town, we'd love you to use our girls. So that after that, and then it got so wild that Vince is like, okay, no more strippers. We're not doing strippers no more. So then they start getting models. But the funny thing is, is the models were worse than the strippers. Oh. <laughs> they really were. The models were a lot worse than, because it was funny. But, I could, but then it got to the point, like at TV, the girls would come to my hotel room, wherever I was staying, because we'd show up a little bit late at TV, because Vince wanted the people to see me get out of the limo with the girls. So they would, like, they'd pick us up at 3 o'clock, where well, the girls would come to my hotel at 12. <laughs> So mind you, everybody's out because it's the TV hotel. Everybody's going to work, to, to TV. And as they're going, I'm out there at the pool smoking weed with a bunch of girls drinking, having fun. The girls are swimming. Because I say, come on, enjoy yourself. You've never been in front of 18,000 people. It can be a little, you know, weird if you've never done it. So I'm like, relax, have fun. So guys would be pulling their bags going to work, and I'd be out the pool with the girls smoking. It was so cool, man. I had the best gig. No, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> me and you, we smoked, we hung out after a show last year, and we were talking that a lot of these, these gimmicks or these characters that these guys play, it's the reason they go over so good, Stone Cold, The Godfather, The Rock, you know, all those characters are an extension of who these guys are. I mean, you're working, you're working strip clubs, co-owning strip clubs, you're working with pretty ladies, I mean, you're really a, a big marijuana fan, so... Just the Godfather, you're just turning that dial up just a little bit, and then I mean, it's it's totally working. I mean, it's authentic. People are believing it, and I think that's why back then the the wrestling world was so much more in tune with you know their fans and stuff. Because like, where did you draw the line with some of these guys? Like some of these guys, you know, oh, okay, you can say what you want about wrestling, but I mean, they see the Godfather walking by with a bunch of you know these security guards that aren't wrestling fans. I had a friend that was a security guard at a. Uh, at the time HSBC Arena and he would always say like I knew it was like set up and staged but like Paul Bear and Undertaker really do come in together they really don't talk they're kind of odd guys he's mentioned you he's like he comes in and he's hanging around girls the dude was like caught smoking a couple times like it, it's <laughs> it's a you know Bradshaw and Farouk are really drinking beers so he's like where do you draw the line with like what's what's real and what's not in this world and I think just technology, smartphones has really, you know, pulled the pulled the the magic away from everything of like what it really is. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was more crazy. What was good about the Attitude Air? This is when there was no cell phones, no laptops. Uh, they just there was no social media. They just came out with what were they called? Pagers, beepers, beepers, pagers. <laughs> they just came out with that. And I remember everybody like, why would not, you know, nothing against women? But everybody would be like, well, why would you want a pager? That means your wife can get a hold of you anytime time she wants. Mm -hmm. But that's so long ago, you know? <clears throat> and so as phones came out, and I, me, Undertaker, and Vince would go out every night at TV. I mean, the strip clubs. Because there was nobody taking pictures of you back then. And, and so you just can't do that anymore. And that's why the guys, they can't socialize like they want to. Because now somebody gonna take a picture of you doing something stupid next right. you know you you're can't blasted. go out and just be a human being you know yeah, and just so. cut loose have a little fun after a long work week you know it, it kind of took away having fun you mentioned i'll let you like that and i'll let you smoke that but so you know as wrestling fans i think we all have heard the rumor about 
the snake, well, those snakeskin pants Undertaker wore back in the day. Those, yeah. So there's a rumor online, and it bugs me because, like I said, after me and you smoked, we hung out. As uh, GCW would say, we, we flew a few planes. Yes, we did. We were just with him in Tampa. That was pretty cool. A lot of people online, you know, they get on these Facebook groups and they, you know, everyone wants to be the guy that knows the most about wrestling and they got the inside scoop and that's cool and all. But I've had guys literally get angry with me that like, no, I smoked with the Godfather. I asked him if those were his pants and they're like, no, those, those were, those were the Undertaker's pants and blah, blah, blah. And he borrowed them from the Godfather and it's, so let's just get it out the air right now. We're going to put this part on YouTube too. Are those your pants the Undertaker is wearing? Those pants right there that The Undertaker is wearing are not my pants. There it is. The verdict is in for us. I am not the father. <laughs> we got to have someone running with the camera. Yeah, Take guys it. get heated about this. Like, no, dude, it's not true. So tell me the story. Do you know anything about those Take, pants? Yeah. Taker, Taker has a podcast that they haven't signed a deal yet that they did two years ago. And I was the set. It was called Dead Man Inc. Show. They, for some reason, they haven't posted it yet. I don't know why. I think they didn't like the deal that they got with Spotify and stuff. But besides the point, I was the second episode, and, and uh, we talk about this. And he says, those are not my pants. He says that the uh, seamstress that we all used, her name was Terry. And he said him and Terry came up with this idea to try this look. And he says probably the stupidest thing he ever did and the worst thing he ever wore. But that's all him and Terry. Vince hated it. <laughs> Vince hated it. That's what Mark said. But those are not my pants. We wear the same size pants, but um, those aren't mine. And I don't, I'm, I'm not sure on the year on this, but you might have been with Right to Censor at the time of when he was like wrestling Kurt and they were going through that storyline. So, I mean, you weren't really the guy. You were the good father. You were, you were into that whole thing. You just bring my... You just... Uh, you hate that gimmick that didn't work? Oh, I could feel the energy being drained from your yeah, godfather. Yeah, I'm now going to have to have oh, a shot at Jack. Oh, he's into the good father. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I was, like, go back to where I said wrestling was fun for me. Right. And when I wasn't having fun, I was ready to go. It wasn't about the money. It was about the fun. I was having so much fun as the godfather. They say, Vince wants to talk to you. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go, what's up, Vince? Charles. Change of plans. I'm like, change of plans. I hate that change of plans will get you every time. That should time. be a shirt. Yeah, change of plans. Change of plans. So he goes, tonight we're going to put you in the RTC. Somehow I'm going to lose a match to somebody and I'm going to end up in the RTC. And so he goes, and in his defense, Vince had gone public already. He's now on, he's not on uh, cable no more. He's on the network. They're coming down on the puppies. They're coming down on DX and the Suck It. They came down hard on Val Venus. People forget about him. Yeah, he, he ended up he in was, the RTC yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They really so, railroaded him. Yeah. The group that was picketing Vince was, it wasn't the art, it was the PTC, the something TC. Parents against something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was Vince's way of ribbing them. I thought that it was just going to be a rib, and then I'd go back to the Godfather. So uh, I just remember. <laughs> I just remember going, so uh, no more hoes? And Vince was like, no, Charles, no more hoes. And he, I wasn't even, it was like, dah, 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 dah. I'm like, so no more hoes? He's like, no, like three times. He's like, Charles, no more hoes. And this is what I said. Then finish me up, Vince, I'm done. And he goes, Charles, hang on. He goes, I need you to finish this program with me. He goes, finish the program, you can leave. And that's what I did. And then he could keep us there longer. I was going to say, you To keep us there teams. longer, yeah. we beat the Hardy Boys, me and Bull, for the straps. And I'm not going to walk out on them with the straps. And so I'm like, as soon as they take these straps off of us, I'm out of here. And I was. Yeah, I think you stuck around. I, I was just watching that not too long ago on the Peacock Network. And you guys lose the belts. And then I want to say it's a month or two You guys later, thought you got to eat it. And you're not, you're not really around anymore. And so you just kind of split. No, I took Finish Me Up. Did you, and you guys did a lot with the Dudley boys. You got put through a lot of tables, man. You guys were working with the Dudley we boys were, a lot. We were wrestling, shows me, and, and everything. me and Bull were wrestling the Dudley boys on the house shows for like three months. And we would beat them, but they'd get their, you know, shine back by putting one of us through the table after the match. So it'd be like, hey, Bull, you got to take it tonight, man. I, it would be like, we'd switch <laughs> it. And just... Um, the reason that I don't like the RTC, nothing against anybody in that group, it's just that it took the Godfather away from me. 
And to this day, man, I, I've never seen Stevie Richards, but I'm not a bully. By no means am I a bully. But if I was ever to be considered one, it was against him because I took everything out on him like it was his fault that I was in the RTC when it really wasn't. He had nothing to do with it. Yeah, he's so, just trying to get a spot. Believe me, I was a dickhead to him. I was really mean to him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it wasn't right, but I, I took it out on him. Well, I mean, and I get where you're coming from. It's like, dude, this, I finally got something that I'm having a blast with. I'm making money, and it's working, and now you're leading this and it's taken away from me and i don't blame him for taking that opportunity and running with it because up until that point he kind of was just yeah. bopping around on sunday night he he really wasn't doing a lot from what i remember so i understand that i gotta ask what's it like getting put through a table like that by the dudley boys um it's not the funnest thing in the world <laughs> and people think that those tables are gimmicked and they cut them or they no they don't they don't gimmick a table because if you do, it could splinter and get hurt. Uh, the best thing you can do is get your, keep your hands in here and tuck your chin. Yeah. <laughs> and ho the harder they put you through the table, the better it is because the table will break better. Yeah, I've seen that. No, I you, ever, I... you ever see when I put Victoria through a table? Yeah, that was rough. Oh, my God. You folded her back up the other way, too. It was like her legs. Are... She was, I, I got her up here, and I went to put her through the table, and she was so light that she was just, she... Well, how was she after that? Was she like, no, she loved it. Oh, she <laughs> took it like, the I, 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 This is what, I swear, after I did this, I wish you could see it, that I walked back through the gorilla, like, say, that's the curtain. Behind the curtain and where everything is, is called Gorilla Station. And so when I walked back through Gorilla, Vince was there, Taker was there, and Triple H was there. And Vince did one of these numbers. <laughs> well, that's not good. Taker looked at me, and I'm like, what? And then Hunter, I, this is exactly what Hunter said. Hunter said, a lot of people call me Bear. Hunter calls me, a lot of people call me Bear. He goes, Bear? He goes, I know you can kick my ass. He says, but if you ever put me through a table like that, we're going to be fighting, bro. That's what Hunter told me. And I'm like, what? And Taker was just looking at me. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> but then I seen the video back, and it was, man. If you well, get a chance. she's so small. I mean, you're normally working with 260-plus yeah, pound guys. 300-pound you know, guys. Yeah. Like, and she just went up so light and just, man. Yeah, that was a doozy. I do remember that. Oh, look at that picture. Yeah, I pulled that picture up because that's where you became Bear. Am I right? That's where you became Bear in your MC days? See me? That's me on the far left over there. That's obvious. And what a lot of people don't know is, yeah, <laughs> look at the bullets and stuff. <laughs> this, is, this is a part, if you guys noticed the patches that they were, they're red and white. And I don't know if you're familiar with motorcycles, but that's a, a color that the Hells Angels wear. Oh, oh. And so is that you, I. Paul? I belong to this club called the Thugs, which was a sister club for the Hells Angels. And at the time, I don't know if there's any black guys. I think there are black guys in the Hells Angels now. But at the time, there was no black guys in the Hells Angels. But in New York, they had a Puerto Rican chapter. So they were telling everybody I was Puerto Rican. But I, I can tell them whatever you want. But I'm probably 300. We were at Sturgis, South Dakota, at Black Hill Sturgis. I'm probably 350 pounds there. This is probably... One year before I get into wrestling, all the guys out of the seven, eight guys that was in the club, I, joined, I got into wrestling. One bought a bunch of Gold's Gyms in Washington. The rest became Hell's Angels. Five of them got killed in prison, and one's left in prison. Oof. Yeah, so, so I, I think I made down. a good choice. That's why this one tattoo I have here is really dark. You can't see it. Yeah, it's because like those were out. my colors. And Vince is like, you can't, I can't have you on TV with that on, you know, and so. But yeah, that I was, believe it or not, I was like a hardcore biker. That's Hardcore biker. And you find pictures of The Undertaker back in the day. Let me uh, go through here. Me playing the drums. Like 1989. Can you still play the drums? I, I can't play the drums, but I can make you think I can play the drums. <laughs> You know how you guy could play that one song on the piano? I could get, a, I mean, I could get things going, <laughs> but I can't play it, That's better than me. I can't even do one, so that's all. We got to get another beer up here. So this is what I wanted to touch on. Last night, we were hanging out here. We had, like, a Grateful oh Dead thing God. going on. We were all uh, smoking, hanging out. We had the Grateful Dead show going, and uh, me and him really hit it off, and we were talking. 
And he's going on and on about Harleys and country music and chewing tobacco and all this. And he got all these tattoos. And then I, I remembered I see a picture of him and Undertaker back in the day. You were really the biker, it seems like. You were really like the country boy. And it kind of rubbed off onto that redheaded uh, tall guy. This is probably 1988, 87. And uh, I just, I'm fresh in the business. And I ran a program with Jerry Lawler. And after that program finished, they didn't know what to do with me because I was green. I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. So they said, we're going to bring this tall, redheaded kid in to work against you. His name's Mark. And he wrestled as master of pain. And so we had a match together. And it was so terrible that they put us together as a tag team. And from that, from that day on, we became best friends. And to this day, that's not even my friend, man. That's my brother for life. I, I love that dude. Uh, but back then, he didn't chew. Well, he never chewed tobacco. Uh, he didn't ride a Harley. He didn't listen to country music. He didn't drink Jack Daniels, and most importantly, he had no tattoos. Now, mind you, I'm a biker, and most of the big white dudes that I'm around all have tattoos. They're all big dudes with tattoos. So I couldn't understand how this big white dude had no tattoos. And I don't know if you have the picture. Uh, you showed it to me last night. Yeah, yeah. I have the picture him of me in the chair getting the first making one him done. get his first tattoo. Him and Paul, Paul Bear is in it in Vegas, and he got the uh, dead man on his arm right here. But yeah, and then, and then I, I taught him how to ride a Harley. That's crazy. So it's kind of like you kind of planted that seed that, you know, 20 some years later would be the American badass. Like, he, you know, that, Taker, that gimmick that came out. Taker will tell you that the American badass, and, I, and I'm just telling you what Taker, he says, it's him. He it just yeah. took my robe. I, but, you know, I love him, man. I mean, that's no joke. That dude is, I just seen him Tuesday after Raw, it was me. Him, my wife, my wife, me, him, Ric Flair, Jerry Lawler, who doesn't drink, Dallas Page, who doesn't drink. And we were all just chilling, man, and telling old stories. And it was just, it was just cool, man. And it's cool to get, have, get together with guys like that. No, that's, that's really cool that- Now, Flair, he, he, Flair, does, Flair does it all. <laughs> we know. Um, so when you start, like, because for a little while, you guys were switching off Thank back you, and forth. That. He Thank was you. in, uh, he would be in Germany, you would be in the U.S. So you and him kind of bounced around a lot. You, ne you didn't stick together after this, right? You guys split up a bunch of times. When he went to, he went to Japan. When he came back to Japan, I went to Japan like as his protege. Okay. When I got back from Japan, he was in WCW as Mean Mark. Mean Mark Calloway, I believe, okay. yeah. Then I went to Germany. They fired him. They let him go. Did they really? Yeah. Well, he went there, and then I went to Germany and worked for Otto Vons. So this was in the car there. And there you would wrestle in the same town for like 30 days, then you go somewhere else for like seven months. You'd be in at Hanover, Vienna, uh, Seibotten, Dortmund. You know, you'd be in all these places. This is who was on the card with me. Scott Hall, Owen Hart, Chris Benoit, Fit Finley, Dave Taylor, Salvatore Malomo, PM News, those are guys that was on this seven month tour with me. And that's where I learned most of the stuff is being around those guys and getting in the ring and actually learning some stuff. But then when I got back from Germany, Taker was in WWF. And so I got a tryout and they hired me. I went to Arizona, I came out as, as Sir Charles because we was in Phoenix and at that point, Charles Barkley played for the Phoenix. And so they wanted to get heat on me, so they called me Sir Charles so people would boo me. They hired me, and that's when Vince says, go home and sit. He says, I like that mustache. He <laughs> says, go home and sit. And he goes, you got a body of a monster, but you got a baby face. And that's when they came up with Papa Shango. And Undertaker, he's not a big smoker. He's not, a big, he's not into this, is he? Not one bit? I don't know why he doesn't smoke. I don't get into it. I don't. I've asked him before, have you ever smoked? He goes, I've tried it with you before, but I don't remember ever him trying it with me. He just doesn't dig it, you know, which is cool. I heard, I think I might have heard you say it in an interview, but I remember reading it somewhere. Could Paul Bear roll good joints? Paul Bear <laughs> rolled excellent joints. <laughs> they look just like cigarettes. Like I hope he would do like the, oh, yes, as he was rolling it up. I would really have loved that. <laughs> he was, uh, so many of these guys have passed, it's sad, but. 
he was a great, like, you, I don't know if you ever used a rolling machine. Yeah. And it rolls the cigarette types, joint, you know. Paul Bearer could roll one like that. Wow. <laughs> so what, he'd just be sitting in the back rolling them up for you, and then that would... Be I would say, he'd be like, he called me Pappy. How did he come up with Pappy? Papa. Oh, people there you will go. call you, usually people will call you what, when they met you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people met me as Papa Shango, so a lot of people call me Papa. Ron Simmons calls me Kama. Okay. Because he met, you just get, you know, people that really know me call me Bear. Yeah. Now, you, Yokozuna, did you, I know he traveled with Undertaker, Paul Bear, so I'm assuming he traveled with you. Did he smoke at all? Did you, any stories about the late, great Yokozuna? Yoko smoked, drank. You want to hear a Yoko story? Of course, I'd love to hear a Yoko story. All right, I've told this story before, but I'm telling you, I'm a country boy, right? Now I've listened to all time. I've listened to rap wasn't really big back then for me, but the Chronic album was. I bought a '64 Impala because of it. But uh, I'm, I was a big Hank Williams fan, Junior. So I'm driving. Don't get me right. I'm not sure who the fourth person was. I'm driving back then. We'd rent Cadillacs and Lincolns. All right, I'm, it was, so we had a Cadillac or a Lincoln. I'm driving, Yoko's over here. You couldn't get, but if you had got behind Yoko, you had to be small. So I think Paul Bearer or somebody was behind him, and then Taker was behind me. So I'm driving, right? I had a big old dip in, back from Copenhagen in. I'm just driving, singing my country music, and just singing along. Back then they had cassette decks, right? Yoko looks at me, looks at the cassette deck, looks at me, and I'm just, yeah, oh my, right. I'm singing, right, <laughs> doing my thing. Eject, puts his window down, ejects the tape, throws it out the window. And I'm like, what the fuck, man, why would you do that? And this is exactly what he said. He said, hey, motherfucker, anybody ever tell you you black? <laughs> <laughs> and I swear, and it, it had nothing about do about being black. It's just I like country music. I listened, I knew all Motown, I knew... I knew oh, everything, but I, oh, if you get in my truck at home, it's going to be country music on it. It's, it's going to be older country music. No, last night we were hanging out here, and like I said, we had the Grateful Dead thing going on. And then afterwards, like, you know, the place is still like clearing out. People are relaxing, you know, having a few drinks, you know, water and stuff. And uh, like Leonard Skinner's coming on, and like Hank Williams Jr., and this man is just air guitar and having the time of his life. I'm like, God damn, that's cool, man. Like, that's cool. Very versatile guy. I mean, you know, I didn't really thought about that. So, you know, just running down the list, you know, Paul Bear smoked. I know that, you know, Yokozuna. Did you ever, like, with the newer guys coming in, you know, have you seen, like, there's more guys open about it or know it's still taboo um, because of how public everything is and how no, still touch and go everything is? Don't forget, I'm not there. Right. And, or nor have I been there in a long time. So all I know is that they do not test for cannabis anymore. So I'm sure they're more open. I don't know. I mean, back... When I was there, guys were pill heads. You know, I was, there wasn't a lot of smokers. Which is crazy, because like, now, you know, knowing what, what we know, it's just like, there's so much terrible stuff. That, that stuff ruined a lot of guys' lives, a lot of great, you know, friends. And uh, here you are just smoking cannabis, man. You're still trucking, you know, you're doing great. Um, I'm, besides my little issues, which I'm working on, I mean, I'm 61 years old. Before that, I, I, I still feel good. I have a lot of energy. Compared to other guys my age, it's because they're still doing that stupid shit they were doing. And you see these guys on the road. I'm not going to mention no names. Of course. But you see these guys on the road, and at night, they're at the bar, and they're drinking, and they're, they're taking pills. And I'm like, you got to let that shit go sooner or later. I let it go a long time ago. I, but I smoke a lot. No, yeah. I, yeah. I smoke like, like uh, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I, I smoke. I'm a big dabber. Boy, I was looking at that. I was in shape back then. Look at me. I was a, I was a big dab. I'm a big dabber. And I probably dab between 20, 25 dabs a day. And I probably smoke an eighth of cannabis a day. Yeah, there's, you're definitely preserved or something. That's insane. I couldn't smoke. I mean, I started smoking. I was kind of like a late bloomer, man, because I was, you know, I got ADD. I'm always bouncing around. I'm on the football team. I'm running track. I was, you know, then I started getting into like, music real crazy but then i got really like really into those like racing and cars and the only people i really could do that with was like my dad or like you know older guys that you know i can't i can't smoke with you need a lighter no this is something different 
What do we the got? The mayor gave me something different over there. We got a flight over here. I call too. Eric. I call Eric the mayor there. We got a flight over here too. We got some Singapore sling, some Southern sugar, ice cream cake runs. What do we got? Black. You know, I can take a dab hit, but I mean a bonk. Let me see. Here you go. Let's see what we got. But if uh, if I do, I I'm a coffer. And once That's I okay. do bong hits and stuff, here. I sit here and cough. Uh, yeah, and you gotta cough it out. It's normal. Dude, sometimes I'll be going here. We, we, when I host the drift shows here, if I'm not driving, you know, I have no money, you know, I'll partake and I'll smoke and I'll have a good time. But uh, every now and then I've made the mistake where it's a long show, we're having a great time. We got cars out there burning up the pit, we're having a great time. Excuse and the, one the coffee. Time, no, dude, you do you. I'll bore these people with a car story. So one night me and my friends were hitting it off, we're having a good time, and I hit the joint, and for some reason I went to cough really bad. And I like, <clears throat> it's loud and like, it sounded almost like a gag into the microphone. And the microphone did that like horrible, like <clears throat> sound. I was like, oh, why did I do that? So, but I mean, that's, that's part of just like being live TV, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. What was this? That was a Singapore Slink, sir. Singapore tastes good. So I took a little rip so I wouldn't cough. No, Singapore Slink. Well, we were talking about that last night. You and uh, from Cypress Hill, I'm having a brain fart on the tip of my tongue, but he was telling you not to hold it in like that. You know what I mean? Be real tells me because he says, that you, you know that old saying, you got to cough to get off, you got to hold it and all that shit. All that really does is tear up your lungs if you hold it in. And B's a firm believer. I just sorry. It just I laugh at myself when I see myself. I just laugh all the time. But he's a firm believer then that once you take it in, let it out. You don't got to hold on to it. And I'm like a kid, you know, I'm taking a hit going. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, there, just stop doing that. But I'm learning. But he, his theory is. I'm looking, some of these my wife came out with me a couple of times. That's why I'm looking. I'm like, there's my wife right there. Which one's your wife in the back we're watching? I, I'm looking. I don't know. Some, she's done it like four or five times, but. She would just substitute in, like, sweetie, I No, I she would, this is what would happen. My wife would be on the road with me a lot That's sometimes. Cool. That's cool, man. And uh, she would be at the building, and then maybe some of the girls weren't really good looking. And so <laughs> she would say, you know, honey, I'm going to go out there with you and, and help you out. My wife's real beautiful. That's cool. That's, that's dedicated. We, that's, dude, that's such a relief to hear because this business is chewed up and spit out so many great guys and it's it's really you know a lot of guys have had relationships issues and it's it's just like it's cool to hear like it's not always all bad man guys you know things change things can work the two things that changed my life this the two women in my life is marijuana and my wife and at 27 years old i'm playing the part believe me i'm i'm out there doing it all yeah. of us were and i this is the truth i've been married 23 years now and in 23 years, I was the godfather part of that time, okay? Uh, haven't, didn't cheat on my wife one time. That's how much I love her and how much of a friend of mine she is. Now, before that, I was pretty bad. But uh, she's like, uh, it, it, it's easy to, those two things changed my life for the better. No, no, that's awesome to hear. So, I don't know if you guys got anything out there, but I think it's time we all hop on the smoke train. I'm gonna light it up. I'm gonna smoke with this gentleman right here right quick. Sit tight. What? Yeah, I'm gonna hit the bar. This tastes really good. <coughs> oh, please, make yourself comfortable. <laughs> go have a drink. Yeah, you guys can go chill out. Chill out, we're gonna all chill out. We don't out. expect you to sit on the chair the whole if time. If you guys have any questions, I'll answer them the best I can. No. no. I have my own strain in California <laughs> with Cypher Be Real. Okay. It's called Insane Godfather. It's uh, it's uh, it's it's an, uh, it's a hybrid, mostly heavy indica. Okay, but I mean, there's so many there's there's so much good bud out there now, bro. Like I mean, I would be more <laughs> blazing. Was that that? I think it said blazing big buds or something. Um. I would prefer a uh, sativa, but an indica or a sativa does not affect me no different okay, at all. 
Um, <clears throat> I have a very, very high THC level. And so cannabis really can't get me to where I want to go. So it's more of a social thing, relaxed thing. But dabbing does. And I, uh, contrary to what people, I don't smoke cigars. Good? I don't smoke blunts. I used to, but I don't like the tobacco anymore. And so I try not to take in as much smoke. So <clears throat> dabbing, you take three or four dab hits, man. It takes you right there. You're good. You're good. You know, and I do, I do it out of a rig and I cold start. I don't heat it up. I mean, I put it in there and he, as it melts, I hit it and just, and I only do pressed rosin or pressed resin, nothing with chemicals. Yeah. I think we got, uh, is this it right here? Did Paul Fox actually find it? Oh, what a throwback this is. Oh, guys, watch this. Just watch this. <laughs> you sound so concerned. Oh, I, I feel bad about it. Ooh. Oh. Oh, yeah, she folded up, man. Lawn chair. Lawn chair. Uh, I don't even, dude. I don't even like watching and that. And she was cool with it? She's like, hey, no big deal. Was she she good? talks about it all the time. We yeah, sign no, together and we'll sign and get a table. You know what? That just made me think of something. You you ended up with a lot of uh, you were in a bunch of table matches with the Dudley Boys. You were in some hardcore matches. Are you kind of relieved you never ended up dealing with Mick Foley in one of those like Japanese Japanese death matches? Or if, if you I wouldn't have done it. You wouldn't. Have, that's what I was going to ask you. If that opportunity presented itself, if they were going to work you with him, would you have said no? I don't want to do it. No. That's just not your style. No. No, that's some pretty barbaric stuff he does, man. No, it's I crazy. didn't. I didn't get. God bless him. Oh hell yeah. You don't think got, about Mick. Over. Mick probably couldn't fight his way out of this bar, okay? <laughs> but pain-wise, he I couldn't do none of the stuff he does. No. I would I just couldn't do it. I couldn't take it. So I mean, he's tough in a different way. Oh no, yeah. I mean, he's crazy pain, psycho crazy tough. I've always like, you know, the, when we start doing more interviews and more stuff down here, we're really hoping to grow this place and do more and more. I want that's just because you know. That style of wrestling is so far and few between. I always wanted to get other wrestlers' inputs on it. You know, and Mick Foley is just like a prime hey, example. He's, him and Terry Funk. Yeah. Two of the best. Now, I don't know all the new guys. I'm sorry. No, but there's him really and not Terry Funk, to man. do what they do, yeah. I, I mean, I couldn't do any. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I'm not even going to try to lie and say I would. I couldn't. No, I think that's really cool. I like, I just wanted to run that question by and him getting tossed off the top of the cell for that. Were you there that night? Yes. Did you see it yes, happen? Yes. I think some of his teeth came. Oh, it was. Oh, yeah. Dude. One of his teeth got ripped and out of his mouth. And he don't and sell it at head. all. I mean, he don't sell it at all. He's sitting there talking like, dude, <laughs> maybe you should go to the hospital, bro. <laughs> and he's talking about his match. Great guy. Uh, you know, great guy. You know what? You know, I, I, uh, I met him at a show about three, four years ago. And uh, he was real cool, signed all my stuff, real friendly. And when I was walking with the table, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good. I was drinking it. I was at a comedy club. So I'm like, hey, man, you know, when I was a kid, I always loved the Cactus Jack. Bang, bang. Can you give me one? And he just sighed. And he's like, you know, I, I don't really do that anymore. And I was like, oh, all right, man, no problem. And I was, I was like, okay, that was kind of weird. And then he signs my buddy's thing. And he's like, hey, boys, one more thing. And I, as soon as I turn around, he gives me a bang, bang. Bang, bang! And then he just sits back down. He's like, there you go. I'm like, oh, it was awesome. Like, um, I smiled like an eight-year-old, you know? He's done a lot for wrestling. Yeah, no, I just thought that was uh, something to bring up. You know, I've got it on my list here. But uh, so I'm trying to think of other wrestlers. Now, RVD came along a little bit after, kind of like when you were on your way out with WWE. Do you ever do much with him? I know he's out in Vegas. He's a big He lives marijuana. in Vegas. He lives about 20 minutes from me, and I never see him. We have different lives. Only time I see RVD is on the road. And he, him and Katie's usually with them. Uh, the reason why is, dude, <clears throat> by 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, I'm asleep. I'm asleep. And by 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm in my jacuzzi at home, out, my outside <clears throat> jacuzzi, smoking a joint. Okay, that's just about how I live every day. I'm a, I go to bed early. I, I just don't have, now that I don't own the clubs, I have no reason to be up late anymore. And so I go to bed early. I love to get up early, roll up a big fat joint, go get in this jacuzzi, and just start my day there, man. That's where I start. Usually by 10 o'clock, 11, 
I'm done with everything and I'm just kind of hanging out. But uh, the problem is, is RVD night starts at 10 o'clock at night. And he, he laughs because he's coming home at four or five in the morning and I'm getting up at that time. So we have totally different, not, you know, lives. I don't live that life no more. No, and he's still real active. I mean, he still wrestles matches and stuff a yeah. lot. He's still really. And you know what? Look at the kind of wrestling that that guy has done. You know, the, the, a lot of the hardcore stuff, the ECW stuff, all that crazy stuff. And he smokes cannabis and that's it. And he's and he's still wrestling. He's still doing great. I, I mean, I know he's a lot younger than you, but it's just like, well, he's it's not crazy too, that you know. He's, not, he's older than you think. I bet you he's in his fifties. No, he's absolutely in his fifties. Yeah, he's in great shape. <clears throat> but I, I, dude, I love the dude. Yeah, and it's just a, it's just crazy that you know, people think about like for how long it's taken marijuana to get to where it is, to where it is now. Like we're all openly sitting out here smoking, relaxing. No one's fighting each other. No one's yelling. Everyone's getting along, and it's. For years, it was illegal. It was bad. You can't do it. You know, guys were losing jobs over it and stuff. People are going to jail for right. it. And it's just, you know, and that's great that we had guys like you ingraining these, you know, as a little kid, you know, I saying it, walking around my highest light, a fatty for this pimp daddy. I was, you know, nine years old in 1999, <laughs> man. I didn't know what I was saying. But then I get high, you know, I'm in high school, I'm smoking with a friend and I'm like, Oh, like this fatty for this pimp daddy, and like everyone dies laughing at the party. And I'm just like, it's the Godfather, and they're like, oh yeah, dude. And it's like, it remind us that dude was a smoker, you know? It's dude, like, we would come up with that stuff. A friend of mine named Kyle Bell. I w that time we were home on. Uh, yeah. You got home on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and depending on if you're on the East Coast or not, you'd have to leave Thursday night for WWE or Friday morning. So you're only home Wednesdays and Thursdays. To, yeah, Wednesdays and Thursdays, the only days you're home. And so my friend Kyle would come over and we'd just smoke, man, and I'd come up with, we'd come up with these sayings. And, uh, you know, they're all high sayings. All the sayings, Pippin, all these things on the back of my vest, all that stuff, it was just us being high. Thing. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Were you high like every time you wrestled? I've probably been high every day of my life since I was 27. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sick. And I know that sounds funny, but... No, no. And here's another thing, and I'm I, being... I, I'm being... I'm being this is going back to biker bear. There's like... There's bear, and then there's godfather. Godfather and Charles Wright are the same person. The person that you see right here, the, I, I believe me, I'm just like this. <laughs> this bear guy, he's more of a biker. And he's more... He, he has a short temper... And he's not a nice person. He's a very mean person. And I know it sounds funny, but we keep that guy away. And cannabis, I know it sounds weird, but that guy comes out every now and then and he's really mean. So we keep him away. And I tell people, if it wasn't for cannabis, I'd be in jail for murder or something, or I'd be dead. Mm -hmm. Because I would have killed, I, I'm just, I, I had a, I have a short fuse. And, you know, especially if you call me that N-word. You won't call me that twice. I don't care who you are. <laughs> you get it. If you say it once, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> and so, but cannabis really keeps saying that black men. That, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Raider, all these guys, man. We had so much fun with that gimmick. No, that, uh, uh, but we keep bear away. We don't, we don't want him to show his face. No, I believe it. Last night we were hanging out and it's just like, yeah, this dude's really like this. This is so sick. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you came out, you were really repping it. It just blew my mind. They didn't know what you were saying really, or they kind of were just like. Be Real asked me one time, he's like, how are you getting away with what you're, you're saying? And I told B, B, I don't think they know what I'm saying. I don't think people really know what I'm saying. What got me in trouble is High Times Magazine did an article on me. And, it, and, and because when they came after me, everything that they said was from that high times edit. It was like word for word because it, it, it you know, that article called whoever watches high times, whoever the watchers are watching that. That's what got me in trouble. That drew a lot of attention towards me. <clears throat> did, uh, did Vince ever, I don't know, I'm going to ask it. So they did like wellness checks and stuff with you guys. How are you passing those if you don't mind me? <laughs> Like, how are you passing those if you're high in wrestling? I, 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 this is all I'm going to say about that matter. <laughs> I never failed one. Okay. Um, I did not have no special agreement with nobody. I didn't have nothing. 
for whatever reason, they didn't fuck with me. That's it. Uh, I had no, for whatever reason, they didn't fuck with me over it. Well, you were never, you were never in the media for anything no. bad. You were never an eyesore on the business. You were, you know. Oh wait, and, and plus the fact they all spoke with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, there you go then. You know, it was funny. A lot of the boys didn't smoke. It was the agents and the older guys that smoked. Teddy Long smoke? Teddy smokes. Okay, I, th I, remember, I remember hearing that. Yeah. yeah, Teddy smokes. I remember hearing that. Uh, this is cool. All the things I always wanted to pick the man's brain, I'm going to do it. He's a great dude, man. You really made this whole thing easy for me. This is my first booking show. This is the first time I've tried to do anything like this. And uh, it, he's made it very easy, so I appreciate that. Brother, you've that, done brother. a great job. Yeah, yeah. You've done a good job. Makes it so much easier. But, That's because uh, it keeps, keeps me high the whole time I'm here. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, you want to try this one? Yeah, no, get it rolled in Keith, though. It's way Guys, better. since I've got off the plane, within three seconds of me being in, in the car, I got handed one of these. <laughs> and I've been handed one ever since. Every time I put one down, they hand me another one. But he, he's just burning oh, through Oh, look them, at so that. I mean, all right. Oh, my God. We're going to light that, and there's going to be like seven minutes left in the show. Before you should I'm just pass this around. Off to DJ Anthony over here. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to end up smoking that later on. I know it. The girl well, this, is a group, this is a group pass around, isn't it? We could light that. I don't know if everybody's... Is that is bad, man? That's nice. That's nice. I'm like in love. You guys see me? I'm like. Ah. <laughs> Do you want to light it? Uh, let's light if it with other people. You don't have to hit it if you don't want to hit it. We'll just keep it moving right along. I know this is you know times have changed, but if we're all smoking together, we'll light it. Can we eat someone to light it? If you don't want to hit it, let's just keep it moving around the room. One of those for, for a souvenir. Oh, of course we can get you more more of these. Get a big light over here. I say like yeah, that. Yeah, no, so you were never an eyesore on the business. You always did all your, all your shit to it. You know what I mean? The and it sounds like you got along great with Vince because he'd bring you back whenever he needed you. He had a good relationship with the boss. So I mean, Taker, uh, I don't own the rights. I just filed for Godfather and Papa Shango because <laughs> they let, for whatever reason, they let they expire. So I just filed for those, but I don't own them right now. Can you help me do it. And uh, I was talking to Taker, lit one this big. and I'm like, you know, I got this bud called Insane Godfather. And uh, I'm like, I don't want uh, Vince to know about it because they might come down on me, right? And so Taker, Taker tells me, he goes, oh, Vince knows about it. And I'm like, well, what do you mean Vince knows about it? He goes, I showed him your bag. And so this is what Taker said. Taker says, all I can tell you is you have a special place in Vince's heart. He goes, for some reason, that dude likes you a lot. So I'd let it go with that. Oh, we got to get some, oh man. Oh, you're ready for we this? We got to get a picture of this for me. Oh my God. We're like kids. Yeah, dude, hold on. Okay, hit it now. Oh yeah, look at that. I'll get the big Indian logo on the background. Look like a cartoon character. This is sick. <laughs> When it gets down to here, it's going to be hitting really good. I feel bad for whoever gets it at that point. Whoever holds it, don't hold it by this or you'll, it'll break off. Everybody just do your best. We're not going to judge you here. We've all dropped one, broke one, trashed one. It happens. Now, Screw that. I want it to come back to me. <laughs> when it's back down to here. Now, if you don't want to hit it, just send it on its way. We don't judge here. <clears throat> you yeah. might, I might not even let it go. <laughs> We just get absolutely ruined and we just keep talking. So what about like Royal Rumble when you came back in 2002? You've got to get a picture of before me. Okay. Oh, this is cool. We might need another one of these. Please, no. This, this, this interview is about to go downhill Here quick. You go. <laughs> oh, man. We were off to a good start. If you get that... That plant would be cool too if you can get it. Oh, the plant? All right, the lighting in here is wild. All right, exhale, brother. Oh yeah, work it. The conductor of the smoke train up here, ladies and gentlemen. Where's it going? 
That is too cool. <coughs> was there some more questions out here? Yeah, I was about to say, if you guys are ready, while we're passing this around, while we're all getting to know each other, why don't I come out there? If you guys got any questions for the Godfather himself, Papa Shago. Last night, uh, the mayor had a smoke machine going. <clears throat> Oh uh, yeah, we got like a... Too bad we didn't have that in here now. It's we a leaf everybody. blower, but we pack it with different leaves and we blow it all over the place here. Last night they had the leaf blower Anybody with weed Anybody have any questions it. while I'm here? You, sir, down low. What do you got for me? So, who would you like to see yourself, if you could work with somebody now that's in the business now, who would you work with? Obviously, I could say Riddle or Randy, obviously just within the same genre, but who would you like to work with now that you didn't get a chance to? With current roster? Current roster. Yeah, it could be it could be WWE, it could be AEW. It could be current WWE. roster, AEW, it could be any organization that's ah. up and running now. Who would you like to work with? Top dog, Roman. Top dog, Roman. You're gonna wrestle, wrestle the top guy. I wanna see Roman Reigns get knocked out. I tell you who I wouldn't want to wrestle. Didn't, didn't I, do good enough, I wouldn't want to wrestle Brock. No. No, I, that, no. 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 I wouldn't want to do that. I could see that though. That'd be a cool one. Maybe uh, Papa Shango, what's the kid's name? Uh, Dan Housen? Dan Maybe him and Papa Shango could have a voodoo thing going at each other. All right. No. What's up, man? If you had to create a faction today with just based on marijuana people, who would it be? A faction based on marijuana today, who would it be? That is still working? Current or, or old wrestlers? Uh, me? Current or old wrestlers. If you could ever make a marijuana themed faction. Me? Right? Yeah. Me, RVD. Question. Me, RVD. That's sick. Okay, I'm like uh, that. Big smokers. Paul uh, Bear could be the manager. Uh, uh, um, Randy's a big smoker. Orton. And uh, the Riddle guy, I don't know him. I hear he has that, but let me see. Give, give me a second. Give me a big smoker. No, this is a good question. It is a good question. Because uh, now I'm telling on people, too. Uh, <laughs> um, Did you say Cody earlier? Cody, yeah, but come on. A big, uh, big Viss. Remember Big Daddy V? Yeah. Big Daddy V was a big smoker. MVP's a big smoker. When I mean big smoker, I mean like me. He's just running through a list of people who smoke. Now this faction is too big. Well, now I'm starting to say, thinking guys that actually smoke. <laughs> so I would, I would assume I would take the top like four that he said. Probably be RVD, The Godfather, uh, Big V, Big Betty V, and then Randy Orton, I would assume. What would you call the faction? The Blazers. The Blazers? <laughs> the Big Blazers. Blazing Big Buds. The Green Blazers. There you go. That works. All right, any other questions here? I'll keep it moving, I'll keep it grooving. Do I see any hands in the air? Anybody got any questions? I might as well just keep smoking this big one, huh? What do your parents think about the amount of weed that you smoke? What do my parents think about the amount of weed that I smoke? I don't know, mom and dad, how do you feel? <laughs> I still get stuff done. I still figure things out. It just takes me a little bit longer. All right, anybody else got any questions? Oh, back up front. All right, well, I'll just keep going then. I might just give the mic to this guy. Do I can't do that. He'll take my job. That's that's not smart job security. It'll be his interview, not, not right. yours. What do you got for me? What's the best Bone Street uh, story you got for us? I know you gave us a visceral one earlier. What's a what's a Bone Street story, or maybe the origin? If you want to go into that route. You know, um, I, we didn't do bad things. We were more a group of guys that watched each other's back and stuff. So, and and. Like I said, at night, it would be like me, Taker, and Yokozuna. We were more of the strip, the strip club guys. Savio and those other guys, and God, was, they'd show up, but it wasn't their scene. So, I mean, it was, you know, it, there's no really no stories. We were just good friends that took care of each other, watched each other's back, made sure nobody messed with us. And if you did, we'd take care of it. And just, we were just good friends. But there's no really, you know, I don't really have stories like that that I can tell. <laughs> so it was just all really good times. Oh, it's already back up to us. We didn't hang out at night together. It was a TV playing dominoes. And we were all good friends. And when we did, we go out sometimes, but it was mostly at TV. It was a group of guys that played dominoes and hung out. And we, we, had, we, we all dressed in the same dressing room. 
We uh, so it wasn't played like, dominoes. It, it wasn't was, like the click. It wasn't like them guys. It wasn't like to that level almost. It wasn't political. Okay, uh, yeah. No, that's true. We weren't political. We were just a bunch of guys that you hung out boys, and watched. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. And always took care of each other. Did the click and you guys ever clash at no. all? You guys were chill with each other. I've never heard any, I've never seen stories like that anywhere. So nah, was... there's, there'd be, no, nah, nobody would mess with the BSK. No, they, we didn't, we didn't, no. We pulled them out of trouble a couple times. Can we hear one of them? Just, you know, it'd be like uh, Sean and those guys would pull somebody's girl and they, you know, they'd like to get a little bit out there. And, uh, we got a call one time, we were in Nova Scotia, and uh, somebody called us and said, hey, your boys are getting ready to get their asses beat. So me, Taker, Yoko, and the Godwins, we jumped in a car and went to where they were and, and kind of pulled them out of some trouble one time. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Yeah. BSK to the rescue, the click. You know what, That's what, I don't know if it's what wrestling is like now, right. okay, but back then, even though you didn't, wrestling was more of a family, now it's more of a business. Back then, it was more of a family meeting. Even though I didn't like you, if I see somebody get ready to jump you or something, I was there for you, you know. But uh, nowadays, it's, it's, it's more of a business. It's not a family anymore. So it's a little different. Yeah, I was just, you kind of answered my next question. I was going to ask, is like, how's it different there? How's the feel for it? Dude, it's, it's boring. It's really boring. You can go there, and before it used to be fun. Now you go there. I don't even like going to the TVs. I literally just stayed in a room. It was me, Hogan, <clears throat> Kurt Angle, Undertaker, Jimmy Hart. We were all in this big room, bigger than this, and they had stuff in there for you. And I never left that room. It's just, it's different. Yeah. No, I, I can imagine, just like you said, times have changed, technology and everything. It's just gotten wild. But uh, does anyone else have any questions before I move on from that? I got one. What? DJ Anthony. What's up, buddy? Um, I know you're old school. No. Never? Never. I wish I would have. I've never met Rick James. I wish. No, I never have. Oh, that would have been cool. My That's a good question. Security, so I know him real well. And I was at Rick's house when Eddie Murphy made party all the time at his house. They got stuck really? In a they got stuck in a snowstorm here, a blizzard for two weeks, and I was there at the house. I never met Eddie. I never met Ed, uh, Eddie Murphy either. Never met Eddie? Uh -uh. What about Charlie? No. You and him would have got along great. Yeah. Yeah. Before he passed away, he's good dude. Did you, uh, were you, obviously, how are you and Ice Team? Were you guys boys? How did that relationship go? Because he made you one entrance song. I know that you and him. Um, we weren't boys. I knew him. Um, <clears throat> Snoop told me when they were doing that album, Snoop called me and he's like, hey man, I got this new kid named Exhibit. And he goes, you should have him do your music. He goes, he, you know, I just, he did Stone Cold or somebody's. I don't know who he did. But uh, it was an album where all, you know, everybody's music was done by some singer or something, performer. And so I called Vince, and Vince was like, yours is already done. And I'm like, who? He goes, I had Ice-T do it, so it was already done. Because I was going to call him and say, dude, let's have this exhibit cat do it. Okay. Yeah, no, I always wondered if you and him ever clicked or if you were cool with each other or not. I know he had an Impala. You had an Impala, right? Well, I had a 64 uh, Impala Lowrider, and he had the same thing. Did you, did you buy it built, or did you have it built? <laughs> I was at home. I went to my barber shop, right, where they'd braid my hair. And that was a barber shop, but it was a beauty salon, too. And every week, because my hair would grow so fast that they'd have to perm it. And so after like a couple of weeks, they'd have to perm the roots because it was that. And so one day I pull in there, there's this real nice 64 Impala and had a for sale sign on it. So I went in there and I think they wanted like 12, five, four or something. And I literally said, I'll take it. So I bought it and then I sent it to a low rider place called Fat Boys and then had another $15,000 thrown into the hydraulics. And so, you know, I had me this badass low rider. Did you like, did you take it out and beat it up a lot? Or did you, did you use the hydros a lot? Or did you like, you, oh, this sounds. Every time I took that car out, I would break something. Because oh. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. And I, I would break something and then it had to be towed back in. And I just got tired of every time I would break. It was my fault because I didn't know what yeah. I was doing. And I just got tired of putting it in the shop and then I sold it. Yeah, no. Did you ever have any other toys? Any other like hot rods? I know you had a lot of Harleys. I've had a lot of cars, a lot of Harleys. 
Yeah. I'm a big gun collector. Okay. I, I have a lot of guns. That's cool. No, that's good. You got to exercise your rights. I like this, man. So, like, thank you guys, everyone, for coming out, supporting this little dream of mine. We're going to keep doing it. You guys are the best. You make this thing work. So, thank you. Let's hear it for Steve Somebody subscribe, guys. Do a great job. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, guys. Let's hear it for the man. You're the man. You made that so easy. Let's go. Yeah. Legend, baby. Big yeah. <laughs> Indian.